So you want to know if all prostate cancers are deadly. Well, in this video, we are going to show you which are not deadly and which are potentially deadly. Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health. So you can be informed and in control of your health care needs. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to know all about good health, go ahead and subscribe below. Like you, many others are interested in digital health, so feel free to reach out with an email or hit the comment section below. By the way, Health Drum is for educational and informational purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimers and the material in this video are in the description below. Okay, so let's get into it. So this screenshot summarizes what the video is about, which prostate cancers are not deadly, which are likely to be outlived, and which are potentially deadly. And we will review the more common detection methods as well as some concerns about treatments. So you may have just felt the shock of a cancer label. However, for the prostate cancer business, it's very important that you do your homework because inevitably, the shock of the cancer label is far worse than the disease itself. So let's check the Gleason 6 and see what that disease is all about. So for many years, the Gleason 6 has been labeled as a cancer on the basis of some very minor low power microscopic appearances, some very minor molecular alterations, and a minor ability for some perineural invasion. However, these changes do not mean that the grade 3 in the Gleason 6 is cancerous. So the grade 3 in the Gleason 6 is still labeled as a cancer. But what really determines whether a cell behaves as a cancer or not? So let's look at this screenshot. The biological pathways for cancer development and spread in the grade 3 cell of the Gleason 3 plus 3 equals 6 are both inactive. Therefore, it doesn't matter what the microscopic appearances or any other findings are, as it's the biological pathways that determine whether it's a cancer or not. And since the biological pathways for cancer development and for cancer spread are both inactive in the grade 3, Nothing else matters. Therefore, the grade 3 cell in the Gleason 3 plus 3 equals 6 is a bogus or pseudo cancer that doesn't need detection, doesn't need monitoring, and doesn't need treatment. Furthermore, there's no evidence that this grade 3 can ever upgrade to be a cancer. So physicians and government healthcare oversight agencies have been well aware that the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer, but why haven't they done anything about it? Why have they not dropped the cancer label from the Gleason 6? Let's look at these points here. Sadly, healthcare is financially driven and has many financial conflicts of interest. Much of the marketing is centered on scare tactics, exaggerations, and misinformation to foster doubt and concern so men get tested and treated. Incredibly, prostate cancer support groups are serious about losing funding if the cancer label is dropped from the Gleason 6. As well, the medical industrial insurance complex, including government healthcare oversight agencies like the NIH and FDA, are more interested in preserving revenue streams by exploiting fear-mongering. So what's the result of keeping the cancer label to the bogus Gleason 6? So because physicians refuse to drop the bogus cancer label from the Gleason 6, Patients continue to be misled into undergoing PSA-based screening. They are misled about regarding so-called benefits of active surveillance. Prostate cancer statistics are skewed and inflated. 
making prostate cancer seem more common than it is. Patients are inappropriately treated and life insurance policies can be terminated because of a cancer diagnosis. So you've learned that the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer or a pseudo cancer and doesn't require detection, monitoring or treatment. What about some of the other cancers? So it's been known for a very long time that most prostate cancers have very sluggish growth rates with cells dividing every 479 days plus or minus 56 days. At that rate, it takes most about 40 years from the time of mutation to get to a centimeter in size. Clearly, for most prostate cancers, there is absolutely no urgency for evaluation or treatment. By far the most important thing you should do is plenty of homework so you know exactly what the score is about your particular prostate cancer and your condition. So now you know that the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer and that many other cancers grow very sluggishly, which cancers are potentially deadly? So the potentially deadly prostate cancers are the 10 to 15 percent high risk high-grade prostate cancers. Unfortunately, many of these particular cancers can already be metastatic by the time they are discovered. So now we know that only a small percentage of prostate cancers are potentially deadly and responsible for the 30,000 or so deaths annually in the U.S. each year. But how reliable is prostate cancer detection? So let's look at these tests for prostate cancer detection or diagnosis. These are also called standard of care or standard practice. However, it's important to realize that none of these are highly reliable. For example, the prostate exam is no more reliable than a coin toss. The PSA test, the prostate specific antigen test, the blood test, has a 78% false positive rate and despite being called specific is not specific for prostate cancer. Even worse, some high risk prostate cancers may go undetected as they can make little or no PSA. And most of the prostate cancers detected are not detected because the cancers elevated the PSA but because the PSA was elevated by the enlarged prostate and the cancers were just detected serendipitously. The prostate needle biopsy is highly risky and unreliable, sampling blindly and randomly about 0.1% of the prostate. This means that 99.9% .9 of the prostate remains a mystery after this silly test. Not only is this biopsy test grossly unscientific, it's even more shocking when you understand that many prostate cancers are multifocal, meaning they can be in up to one to five different areas of the prostate. A more accurate way to determine if there are any other high risk areas in the prostate that haven't been detected by the needle biopsy is to have a prostate MRI by an expert several weeks after the biopsy so that inflammation settles down after the biopsy. The pathology or biopsy is also not written in stone as it relies on the pathologist's knowledge and interpretive skills so that grade misclassifications and disagreements between pathologists are not uncommon and the reason that a second opinion is strongly recommended. Finally, imaging and staging is unreliable, particularly for high-risk disease, as bone marrow aspiration studies have found metastatic cancer cells in the bone marrow in some with high-risk disease when imaging studies suggested localized or organ-confined disease. So the good thing about prostate cancer is that the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer 
and most other prostate cancers grow sluggishly and can be outlived. So not only does PSA testing fail to save significant numbers of lives, but neither surgery or radiation save significant numbers of lives. In fact, at 15 years, those that had no treatment had similar survival rates to those who had surgery or radiation, but those that had no treatment had normal quality of life and no complications. In contrast, both surgery and radiation are associated with a long list of potentially debilitating complications. Surgery has by far the most potential complications, including a high incidence of positive margins and biochemical recurrence, meaning that cancer cells were left behind. So clearly the biggest reason by far most men outlive their cancer is not because of PSA testing or treatment, but the fact that the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer and that many other prostate cancers grow very sluggishly and are outlived. The links to these articles are in the description below, and it's important for you to read them so that you're not misinformed. So to underscore some of the many problems associated with cutting it out or surgery or robotic surgery, I've included this image summarizing a lot of pointers. So this prostate cancer uh, surgery image summarizes many of the problems associated with radical prostatectomy or robotic prostatectomy. As well, it's important to remember that the FDA approval for the robotic device was a sheer fraud and that no clinical studies for safety of benefits were ever undertaken for robotic prostatectomy. So for both PSA testing and prostate cancer treatments, we have no irrefutable and reproducible evidence that anything is life-saving. So what are the consequences of all of this testing and treatment in the prostate cancer industry? So the $32.7 billion prostate cancer industry is a public health disaster with countless men being overdiagnosed and over treatment. In the process, countless men are harmed in the name of saving their lives and with a significant impact on the wives, partners, and girlfriends of these victims. Also, many complications are associated with these treatments, and many of them also require treatment. The use of scare tactics, exaggerations, and misrepresentations to mislead men into being tested and treatments when neither PSA testing or prostate cancer treatments have been shown to save significant numbers of lives is an absolute scandal. Currently, we have no irrefutable and reproducible evidence that any testing or treatments for prostate cancer save significant numbers of lives. So the most surprising result of this knowledge that neither PSA testing or treatment save significant numbers of lives is the fact that both physicians and government healthcare agencies have chosen to ignore these results and carry on as if there's no tomorrow. So in this video, you learned that the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer. Most prostate cancers grow very sluggishly. Only a small percentage are potentially deadly. That PSA testing fails to save significant numbers of lives and that treatments also fail to save significant numbers of lives, and that most prostate cancer information is misleading. To learn more about routine medical conditions, self-care, and digital health, check out some of these other videos.